YouTube, 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 it's Rico, man. I'm back with another video, man. Y'all see what we got going on here, man. We got North London's Bloody Gang War, OFB versus N9, part, excuse me, I believe part four by Chop Lord Ross. So if you already, you already know what, to, what time it is pretty much, but if you're brand new to the channel or you've been watching videos on the channel, but you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Now, don't forget to tell your family and friends about the channel. Hopefully they become supporters of the channel as well. Yeah, also make sure you guys smash that like button and comment on the video to help the video get recommended to a larger audience of people and hopefully bring in new supporters to the channel as well. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss out on new uploads. And be sure you don't miss out on new uploads. Check out the channel every day before y'all go to bed or when y'all wake up in the morning. And also don't forget to follow my IG at LMER. I need the 500 followers. With that being said, man, y'all see what time it is. So let me start the screen record. And it look like we're about to get hit with an ass as soon as we start. That started and we start the video now. And then on the evening of February the 22nd, 2019, SJ would meet with MPK affiliates OSAB. Oh, 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 oh. Legend right there, Sneaks, as well as three other men at his mother's parked car. At the car, they would change clothes, riding out around an hour later on push bike towards Wood Green. This group of cyclists grew to include SJ, Sneaks, Trills, Osav, Shems, and two other unidentified males riding through the city with their faces covered. Upon the arrival to a Wood Green McDonald's, Sneaks, Trills, and Osav, along with an unidentified male, enter the restaurant and attempt to rob somebody. And then after this altercation, the group spot another group of four people, two of whom are confirmed affiliates of Wood Green's 2-2 mob. This includes a man named Jason Frazier and another named Kamali Gavadon Link, aka K1. So after countless lyrics saying they'll kill anything they catch that's green, after spotting their green ops in Wood Green territory, all of the Tottenham boys involved in the ride out drop their bikes, with some drawing weapons and running towards that group of enemies. Apparently Shems pulled a semi-automatic handgun, firing indiscriminately in the direction of the Wood Green members. Ultimately missing the target with a bullet going into a nearby shop, narrowly missing innocent customers. Meanwhile, SJ and Sneaks both pull out large silver knives. Trills pulled out a black knife, and Osav had his hand in his coat, which the court were told represented a concealed weapon. At this point, the Wood Green affiliates attempted to flee the scene whilst being chased by this gang of masked and armed young men. In fact, these scenes were even captured on amateur video by shocked diners eating nearby in a Nando's restaurant. So, attempting to flee, K1 and Frazier split up, taking different routes to try and get back to their car. And during this attempted escape, Frazier is cornered where he's beaten, stabbed eight times, and shot in the buttocks with a shotgun. Moments before the gang are able to deliver a fatal blow to him, however, K1 arrives in a silver Vauxhall Corsa, driving over the gang's bikes and crushing the one belonging to Trills. In this failed attempt to scare off the attackers, K1 unfortunately became the primary target of their attack, with the drillers from Tottenham leaving behind Frazier, who miraculously survives those injuries. So at this point, everybody is running towards K1 in the Vauxhall Corsa that he's driving, with Shems raising a handgun ready to fire at the car, and K1 trying to spin around the car, but ultimately being trapped between two other the parked vehicles. And whilst he's pinned there, the gang unload on that Corsa, attempting to get to K1. One person shoots out a car window before jumping on the bonnet, trying to smash through the windscreen with a gun. Another person jumps on the hood of the car with a machete, trying to chop through the glass. Now for the record, K1 allegedly had a shotgun in the trunk of this car and multiple knives, all of which he couldn't retrieve whilst this attack was going on. And so at this point, it seems that K1 realizes that he is stuck and his only option is to flee the car, quickly jumping out and running into the nearby coffee and cream hair salon. And this shop was open, full of customers, including a four-year-old, an eight-year-old, a baby, and their shocked parents. But the gang apparently weren't bothered by the amount of witnesses. And so, as they rushed into the store, the gang descended on K1 with knives out, inflicting multiple vicious stab wounds, leaving K1 fatally wounded, ultimately dying later in the hospital. K1 was killed in one of the most savage and shocking murders to ever take place on the streets of London. The attack was described by the BBC as reminiscent of a Hollywood film, but to make things even more crazy, after the murder took place, the entire group cycle together back to Broadwater Farm right up to SJ's mum's Peugeot changing their clothes in front of the estate's many CCTV cameras. With the police apparently using Broadwater Farm CCTV surveillance video to identify five people involved in this attack. But that identification would take some time and for at least a little while the police would have no idea who was responsible. In fact just after the brazen murder police immediately made their way to the Broadwater Farm estate even stopping trills of MPK who gave the police false information and since he'd already hidden his weapon the police had nothing to hold him on with him walking away from officers boldly proclaiming, I hope you lot cut down on knife violence.
evidence and all that. But if you thought that was brazen, things only get more shocking. As following the murder of K1 with the direct involvement of SJ, SJ continues rapping along with Bando K and Double L's, dropping numerous songs in the month that followed the murder of K1, including the May 5th release of the trio's biggest track, Ambush, which has unflattering lyrics in it where SJ talks about pressing triggers and being a chest shot chinger when it comes to stabbings. Now, obviously, these are just general lines talking about the lifestyle that he witnessed growing up, but unfortunately for SJ, this track and its references to the violent gang life he lived would be used in court as supporting evidence that SJ and his associates were known to carry weapons and engage in gang activity. But Ambush was really one of the more tame examples, because there were numerous examples of SJ and other members dropping lyrics that seemed to reference the killing of K1. K was in my risen hill and fuck karate with street fighting Joe. The worst of it really came out during the OFB Younger's crib session. Yeah, man, it's just crazy. Like I said, man, it's tough, man. You got losing a lot of talent nowadays to this shit, man. It's just crazy as fuck, man. But um, at the end of the day, trying to help a friend, whether he was able to get away or not, he didn't care. He tried to do what he could do. And that's just the sad reality of his whole lifestyle at the end of it all. Like, at the end of the day, you can only do so much before you get put in a situation where you possibly probably don't have the good outcome you would expect to happen and shit like that so at the end of the day sometimes this shit catch up with you man that's why a lot of people don't want to stay in the streets too long because they feel like it's going to be a chance no matter how good they is at staying prepared for whatever or whatever the case is they feel like one day ultimately they might meet their time no matter what it is man at the end of the day once you in the streets you pretty much not not invincible or untouchable at all like people kind of think they are sometimes some people think they are invincible and untouchable but once they get touched that one time it changed their whole life around like it's crazy man but at the end of the day you got some people that really um don't believe they're untouchable and that's why a lot of them feel like if they in the streets too long they are gonna ultimately get killed or something so that's why I say, man, before you get in the streets, you got to know what type of lifestyle that is and what comes with it, man. Because at the end of the day, you can try to change your life, but you always going to have enemies. That's just one thing that's always bound to happen. You're going to have enemies and you're not going to be able to get rid of them until they are pretty much gone. But you already know how hard that is, man. As the cycle just continues once... One of them is gone, somebody else gonna come in and take their place and pretty much continue on the whole cycle towards you and shit like that. So at the end of the day, man, before you even hop in the streets at all, if you feel like you gonna wanna change your life around and this and the other, just don't even do it at all. Because at the end of the day, people ain't gonna care once you get to a certain point where you're ready to just hop out the game and shit. They don't look at it like that. They look at it as the only way you're gonna leave this situation is if you did or you move away and not too, not too many people can even move away from their city and shit so at the end of the day some of these guys gotta deal with that type of beef for the rest of their life potentially because they probably got a fucked up record where they can't really get a job or they really ain't got no way to get to a job like that 24-7 and so on and so on man it's just hard, as simple as that. Being in the streets, nothing great about it. Yeah, you got the females and the money, but after that, it's not so great. You just got a lot of shit you gotta do and stay low and try to keep your head on your shoulders. It's just that simple. Can't you afford to get caught lacking anywhere. You can't afford to go to jail. You really can't afford to do nothing wrong, period, at the end of the day. So if you're gonna hop in the streets, you gonna have to do it the right way. You gonna have to Make sure you on your P's and Q's at all times, 24-7, and make sure you got a good group of people that you can really trust around you and shit. Because once, like I said, once the people see you coming up, you got people that's gonna wanna take what you got or take you out. It's simple shit like that, man. But other than that, crazy, man. It's just crazy. Let's continue on.
connection with Tim Westwood. Double L's is dropping lyrics about raising the crime rate in the N22 area. Jay went on to diss Lamps numerous times too, and the MPK youngers were also there to drop some incredibly disrespectful lyrics as well. In fact, some of them were so offensive they ended up being censored or taken out of the final version that was posted to YouTube, but because a lot of these lyrics are in other songs or freestyles, it's pretty easy to find out what they were saying. Like MPK Tugger referencing the crew's involvement in the Fall Street stabbing outside of McDonald's at the start of 2019, as well as another brazen line that also appears in Kelvin's coffin, saying, something got tanned in the nine, my mum's like, oh no, what happened? I said, you're late on news, the gang's just done a quadruple stabbing. This was seemingly a reference to a 2018 incident where four men were stabbed in Edmonton following a car crash, with the authorities linking it to a triple drive-by that occurred only 24. Also, if y'all constantly see me looking at my cameras because I be getting notifications and shit, but other than that, that's all that is, but let's continue on. Four hours before, where a 22-year-old man and a 16-year-old boy were both injured by a shotgun blast in a minicamp madness. But one of the most shocking lines that had also appeared on the Sin Squad song Anti Green saw MPK members mentioning Y Dot, who is allegedly a relative of K1, saying that he's suicidal and that they're going to shoot him in the face. With Tugger going on to rap lyrics that were also used in MPK's True Story Part 2, where they mocked Y Dot for apparently being depressed about K1's murder, with the final incriminating line being delivered by Sneaks, who was quite literally there for the K1 murder, saying, anything green get bun, lamps got put in a spliff, and K1 got put in a blunt. Well, this wasn't a great look. By the 21st of April, Trills and Shems of MPK had been arrested. Then on May the 16th, 2019, it's revealed that SJ has also been arrested for murder only days after their Westwood crib session is recorded, with the final suspects being Osav and Sneaks who were arrested on the 10th of July. And what's weird is that even facing a murder charge, SJ didn't even attempt to keep a low profile. On June the 2nd, he drops his track Youngest in Charge from Jail, which included lines dissing his ops from 3x3, E1 and ZT for just starting to rap, with them having only recently dropped their first proper disrespectful track just the beginning in May 2019. And in Youngest in Charge, SJ also drops lyrics about spotting Ops and taking them out and dissing Lamps again. Funnily enough, it was later revealed that whilst SJ was sitting in prison awaiting his murder trial, he was apparently offered a £150,000 record deal off the strength of these tracks he was releasing from prison. Anywho, with the overwhelming amount of actual evidence that the authorities had on SJ and the NPK crew, it's no surprise then that in December 2019, SJ is found guilty of murder in the K1 case, along with Sneaks, Trills, Shems, and Osav from NPK, with SJ, Sneaks, and Osav getting 21 years in jail, Trills 25, and Shems a whopping 28 years in prison. And in a way, what happened to SJ was really the truest example of the consequences of living this road life. SJ was rapping about being real, and he really was involved. But the unfortunate result is, he now has to live with the consequences of getting caught. But just when you thought the story was over, shit gets crazy once again. As when it came for the final sentencing in this case, a massive fight broke out in court as SJ and the four other MPK members all blamed each other for the murder, accusing each other of snitching, with many of these accusations playing out in the run-up to the sentencing in jailhouse Snapchat posts between the defendants, with all of this pressure building up to a crazy moment at the sentencing when all five defendants had a wild fist fight in the dock at court. It apparently took 10 court officers to restrain the defendants and and the fight was apparently so wild that Sneaks of NPK's stepdad jumped nine foot down from the public gallery into the floor of the courtroom to get involved in the fight. That's a long way down. And when he was down there, he apparently even tussled directly with the prosecutor of the case, Oliver Glasgow QC, who he apparently threatened to murder whilst being restrained by courtroom security. A bonehead move that ended up landing him in jail for seven months too. And understandably, this last minute beef between OFB's SJ and the NPK crew who had all done the crime together caused a split between the formerly allied OFB and NPK, which continues to this day, meaning that OFB members would now have to look over their shoulder for ops and former friends turned ops. And the sad truth is that while SJ was sat in jail... A Told you, man, it's crazy. You can grow up with people or be friends with people for years and all it takes is one situation or something like that to happen and all of that just goes out the window. So at the end of the day, man... This just goes to show you the streets is a dirty game, man. Anything can happen. And like I said, you can be friends with somebody for years or whatever the case is, grow up with them, et cetera, et cetera. But all it takes is one situation like this to happen. And you're going to really see y'all. Y'all pretty much going to see if y'all really friends for real or not. Because at the end of the day, there's people that ain't gonna wanna go down for a murder charge, let alone go to jail, period, for you. So when it comes to a situation like that, everybody's true colors is gonna be revealed right then and there. Like, there's people who gonna keep their mouth shut and keep it 100 to the day they die, or is they gonna turn on you 
get less years or to get out of jail period while you go to jail and you gotta do all that time so like i said man streets is a crazy game man you better know what you're doing before you hop up in there if you're trying to live in that lifestyle that's all i'm gonna say on that uh, now let's continue on Weight and punishment for the murder that he'd been involved in. Out on the streets, OFB would be clashing with Edmonton harder than ever, as a young generation of green bandana rocking drill rappers would emerge calling themselves three times three and drawing out the OFB rappers at the highest level. Despite the fact that by mid-2019, Tion Wayne had become a bona fide rap star with... charting songs under his belt, he clearly was still in touch with the streets. Because on June the 17th, 2019, Kush from OFB was caught on camera at a set of traffic lights by Tion Wayne, who filmed him doing the dash, cutting through a red light to escape. Go on. Come out of the car. Come out of the car. Where you going? Come look at these guys, bro. Look at you. Look. After this, Kush replied in a video, not looking particularly shaken up by the incident. I'm sitting in the fucking traffic. I'm looking at my phone. Then I've seen a man run up behind like my car. He's running up behind me and get me. Gone to my driver's side. But then he's got his phone now. He's like, come out the car, come out the car. I've looked at him. I've looked to the left. I'm seeing another you running up next to me. Then I've looked back at him. That's when he's tried to f the video from me. Look back at him. You get me? I've just popped my little signs and a cut. However, other OFB affiliates woke up to the footage and weren't too happy. RV at Tion Wayne saying, when I saw you, you said you ain't got beef with Amanda. From here, we'd see the likes of RB and A1 from the Nine going back and forth on Twitter. And clearly people from all sides were nervous being out public and armed with the beef raging on, with this being the very month that a viral clip circulated of Bando K seen tweaking after a fan snuck up on him from behind. And even those at the very top of the group didn't feel like they could be safe out in public without being armed. Because that same month on the 25th of June, 2019, Hedy1 is caught with a knife after a traffic stop where he ran from the police. He fortunately makes bail so he can play Glastonbury and release his new album, but he is later jailed for possession of that knife at the very height of his career. So between catching that case and going to jail, Hedy One releases his commercial mixtape Music and Road, which is a runaway success peaking at number five in the UK albums charts and containing his hit solo song Both, which landed at number 13 on the singles charts. With both of these projects cementing Hedy One's place as one of the true goats of the drill scene, but while Hedy's going commercial and making music that represents an evolution away from the street activity he was formerly known for, in contrast, Farm Block's top driller RV is still on smoke. Releasing his excellent Savage EP, which is just drill bangers back to back, definitely go and check that out if you haven't. And the project itself happens to contain another smasher of a song, Crep Shop, featuring the entire trio of SJ, Bando K and Double L's. With this releasing whilst SJ is still on jail awaiting his trial, with that song including a famous bar that's appeared on numerous other OFB songs and freestyles, saying try gun lean, get shot from the backseat, a diss aimed at Russ who had a song gun lean, and collaborated with T on Wayne on the song Keisha and Becky. In fact, from here, numerous OFB youngers would release tracks where they went at T on Wayne calling him a joker or a muppet, but the N9 and the Three Times Three boys clearly weren't taking this lightly. As I mentioned previously, much of the disappointment of SJ, in May 2019, the Three Times Three youngers E1 and ZT released their breakout track Just the Beginning, which was littered with disses towards Tottenham. And by September 2019, Three Times Three were spotted on social media recording their own Tim Westwood crib session. And you know these get super grimy. In fact, the Three Times Three crib session was quickly taken down for harassment and bullying and that's because and i would do reactions to those videos but don't some of them be long as fuck so i mean i could eventually do it it's just gonna be broken down in the parts man because y'all already know how i am with the long videos and shit because of the simple fact take forever to upload on youtube i don't know why youtube does that but they need to work on they uploading thing man, because at the end of the day these long videos be taking almost an hour to two hours just to upload and shit. That's why I be trying to break these long videos down in the parts for y'all so I can bring them out. But other than that, man, we're going to continue on. We got about a couple more minutes and then I'm going to end it. And then the next part will officially be the last part of this whole video in general. So y'all definitely leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're brand new, man. And thank you all for watching all the other parts up to now like i said we got one more part after this video and that's gonna be the last part and i might not do that tomorrow just because it might be a super long video because we do got a decent amount of time left so i might do that on monday but other than that you never know just stay tuned simple
because it had so many disrespectful lyrics in it. Like lines from the three times three song No Cap, where they say they smoke Kobe, lines from Just the Beginning saying they're smoking numerous people, and the disrespect in the music is soon accompanied by disrespect on the streets too. On September 17, 2019, there's a shooting at Kenny's Barber's in Wood Green. RV posts up a snap of him at the location laughing. <laughs> Now, that post goes a lot deeper than you might think, because apparently in 2012, a 15-year-old boy was stabbed there, a case in which RV was actually implicated way back, with him being sentenced to seven years in a youth offenders institute at the time, and there was another shooting at that same location in 2014. Then in November, Trapo from OFB claimed that 3 Times 3 actually ran him over, with 3 Times 3 members clapping back on Snap, seemingly acknowledging this went down. A couple weeks after that, Frogger and Heady One are all up on Snapchat, mocking the ops once again, and as we get into 2020, at the top of the year, Heady One is finally sent to jail for six months for getting caught with that knife the previous year. Meanwhile, SJ is still sat in jail, settling into his next few decades in the can, still recording and releasing freestyles, dissing dead ops from his cell. Speaking of which, the split between OFB and NPK that happened after the courtroom fight ended up reaching the streets in February 2020 when NPK members allegedly attacked OFB members with knives, once again in a hair salon, an incident that was caught on video and once again is way too shocking to show you on YouTube. And so while Heady One is sat in jail at the top of 2020 after being caught with a knife, Tion Wayne is just going from strength to strength after his appearance on that NSG single Options. By May 2020, he had racked up a whopping seven entries on the UK singles charts, including Bally with Swarms and Keisha and Becky with Russ, at which point he would pop up on a track with the leader of the most feared gang in all of Watford, the Sidemen, appearing on the tune Houdini with K. Hold on, G. I was not expecting that. You funny as hell. But, hey, y'all, let me know, man. Do y'all fuck with KSI, man? Because if y'all really do, y'all want me to, I'll go here and react to them for y'all. But I'm going to make that a community post today. Um, I'm going to find out how many of y'all really mess with KSI. And I'll think about starting to do reaction videos to his music or something. Y'all let me know. And now let's continue back on. Because that shit was funny. I was not expecting that. Tion Wayne is just going from strength to strength after his appearance on that NSG single, Options. By May 2020, he had racked up a whopping seven entries on the UK singles charts, including Bally with Swarms and Keisha and Becky with Russ, at which point he would pop up on a track with the leader of the most feared gang in all of Watford, The Sidemen, appearing on the tune Houdini with KSI, the charted at number six, and then the track I Don't Know, I Don't Know, with Stormzy and Dutch Avelli that hit number seven. Basically, Tion Wayne was on a roll, everything he touched turned to gold, and clearly, the ops weren't going to be happy about this. In July, 2020 when Tion Wayne is spotted in the studio with Birmingham rapper Mist, RV pipes up on Twitter dissing them both. With Tion clapping back, saying lol you're so selective it's embarrassing laughing face. You're a big man, keep it on the roads and stop tweeting. Fix your career and your bank account before you come on here trying to be a comedian you waste man. This is the only clout I'm giving you. With Tion's description of them as being selective, referring to the fact that if RV is pissed off that Mist is working... Yeah, man, we're going to end it right here for this part, man. Definitely a lot going on in this part, man. But y'all see, we getting closer to the end. Like I said, the next part is going to be the last part to this whole video, man. But other than that, though, man, that's the end of this video, man. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed my reaction to this video and enjoyed me doing this video in general, just make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. Don't forget to tell your family and friends about the channel and hopefully they become supporters of the channel as well. And also, don't forget to turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss out on new uploads. And to be sure you don't miss out on new uploads, check out the channel every day before y'all go to bed or when y'all wake up in the morning. And hopefully this video gets recommended to a larger audience of people and hopefully bring in new supporters to the channel as well. And also, don't forget to follow my IG at LMER. and help me get to 500, 500 followers. I almost said subscribers, but followers, man. But other than that... The rest of my social media platforms is down in the description box down below. So to make sure you guys get access to all my social media accounts, go ahead and go to that description box before y'all exit the video and add me and follow me, all that good stuff. But other than that, that's the end of the video and I'm gonna catch y'all later on with more. Peace.